morning one and all morning temple morning everybody who's watching out live stream home and abroad it's um valentine's day sunday the 14th um we welcome you to this service at this moment i know it's time this time is um time of um problems in the world where we got this wicked virus which is going around but you know something we have got a savior a savior a savior who is in charge of everything and with that savior that savior does everything and everything in his own time let's just open up, up this service with a word of prayer father in heaven we thank you again for this time we thank you for your many blessings we thank you for all what you have done my father my father we know that there's things going on in this world there's things out of man's control but we know you are in control of everything father bless each and every one of us bless everyone who's trying to get this um, virus under control the doctors and nurses bless them all my father bless them give them the understanding they want give them those those who's also in america my father who is listening father be with them Comfort them and protect them. Be with those who seek my Father, give them the comfort they need. We know some people probably has lost loved ones, my Father. Give them also the comfort they need. My Father, you are there to comfort her. You are there to do all things. Father, be with this service at this moment. And we ask all this in thy holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. We know we are, um, <laughs> we've got nobody in church. It's just myself and my wife. And it's nice to be in the eyes of the Lord. We could have done this from home. We could have, in fact, just sat in the front room and just done it, do it from home. But you know something? It's just nice to be in the Lord's house. It's one of the things in which we all look forward to on a Sunday, to be in his house. But we know we cannot be in his house at this time through what is going on. Just a few announcements before we move forward. Don't forget to all service, all service for the time being will be live stream. Sunday morning will be live stream until further notice. Wednesday should, will be live stream also. Sunday evening will be live stream also. So everything we do at this moment for the time being will be live stream. Any changes, we will we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Just one minute. And just, um, just um, making sure everything is all right. Is everything all right? Yes, yeah, so, it's a, sorry, it's the first time I am controlling the camera, so I've got to just make sure that I'm doing it right and it's going out right. Um, Brother Jamie is um, isolated, so I'm doing my own camera at this moment, and I hope that everything is all right with our dear Brother Jamie, Brother sis, Sister um, Claire Tranter, and her son is also also isolated, and we got that group in which they they congregate with is isolated. Hopefully, there is none of them which has got the which has come back positive. Um, Brother Jacinda and his wife is isolated because Jacinda was tested positive. None of the tests is anything which is happening inside the church is from outside coming in. So please, please um, be, take, be safe and notice who you are around. Tonight's service will be done by Satish. Satish will be our speaker tonight. So please, please do join in. Uh, speaker next week will be Dave Cottrell. Please do join in also, and Brother Dennis Buchanan the week after. Um, brothers, we'll be here to um, open up and do the live stream for you so you don't have to worry. It's one of the best things what has happened. We, don't, we do not have to depend on one particular person to do, to do the camera. We could always... Um, share the workload. Brother Jamie was the one who was doing it Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and on a Wednesday. Brother Jamie, if you want to rest, we could also 
chip in. So it's, we are here just to give God praise and give God thanks. I do th um, thanks also Sister um, Beth Openshaw for what she did this week. It was a blessing. The feedback I get, it is a blessing. And I hope you just continue continue to serve the Lord as you have been serving serving the Lord. We do appreciate you and we do appreciate what you, have do, what you are doing also. And it's nice to see others, others stepping up when it comes to God's work. We are here and we are doing Reboot. Reboot is looking at our church covenant. And um, last week was under the, the, sec, the third paragraph of our church co covenant, which is we, we shall, by the grace of God, maintain family and secret devotion, educating our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord and walk circumspectly in the world. As we look at this... Um, at this verse, I will be only doing education, educating our children. That's what I'll be doing. We'll be looking at that, that section. Paul looked at the first section last week, and we'll look at, the, at this section this week. There's also a Bible verse to go with it. It's in Ephesians 4, verse 1. Ephesians 4, verse 1. And this is the Bible verse we shall look at each week. I know Brother Paul just went in his service last week. He, never, he forgot to mention it. But you know something? The Lord works in all different ways. And he bless whatever we do. And Ephesians 4 verse 1 read. And therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that he walk worthily of the vocation where with ye are called. When when I look at that verse, cer certain things comes come comes to mind, and what really comes to mind is when we study the word of God, do we do what we are supposed to do with it, or do we hide it under that bus bu bushel and don't share it with anybody? When I look at some of the amount of people which has gone through Bible college and the way they just drift away after receiving the word, after committing to do certain things for the Lord, the way they just drift away. And you know something, we have got to look at this. We have got to look at this really, really good and what we are saying and what we are saying to the world, not only saying to the world, but saying to our families because when we go through Bible college and we do our studies, we are saying to our family, I want to serve the Lord. I want to serve the Lord. I want to do his work. That's why I'm educating myself in the scripture. But within months of finishing Bible college, you drift away. You drift away in your own direction, not thinking the commitment you have made. Education, educating, maintaining secret devotion with our family, with ourselves, but education. I'm going to start just with the education, the education, education of ourselves. I'm going to split this up in roughly two, part, two parts, educating ourselves, educating our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I am going to split it up, but I'm going to start with education. Education. Parents, we, know, we need to know the word of God, and we need to know what it says. It's nice to come into church on a Sunday and say, I know that John 3.16 3, John 3, says... For, e, for, um, what, for I know what John 3.16 says. I could believe what John 3.16 says. I can believe what, um, what John 14.1 says. I could believe what Genesis 1 say. But do you know the scripture? 
one of the most famous verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his own be only begotten son. You know something, that's something even the blind man down the road can recite, recite from time to time. But do you actually know what it means? Right? In the early days, the early days, the early times, do you know there was no school? There was no school such as we, had it, we have it today. Most children was educated at home. The parents had to, had to do it. Schools are shut down. That's one of, the, one of the main things. Schools are shut down, and they've shut down for the last year for probably eight months or nine months out of the year. They've, they've shut down. And one of the things parents is saying, I cannot do this anymore. They need to go to school. I didn't sign up for this. And that's one of the main things people say. Thank you, my daughter. Uh, that's one of the main things people say, I didn't sign up. But you know something? We all sign up to educate our children. And educating our children is showing them the res responsibility in this world, what they need to do. It is a re the responsibility of the parents it's the responsibility of the parents to teach their children the history and the social con and custom of their nation or they, their country or what is going on in the world. We are also, we should also do that today. I know sometimes it's difficult to instruct your, your children because they do not listen, but let me explain you got to also walk it. They will see it. They will understand. We are to instruct our children in the right, in the right living. But we as an adult has got to, got to walk right. We need to walk right. We need to live right. So our children see it. I am a child. I am not saying at this moment, yes, I am a child of God, but I have got a mother and father. I am their son. I see the way they, they walk. I see things they do. And you know something? There's times my daughter said, you are the spitting image of your dad. Why? Because I see things he does and I do things he does. Because he was walking with God. I see the things my mother does. And I try and replicate it because I know it's right. At the time, I'm thinking, no, I ain't doing that. But I know it's right. We have got to, we have got to prepare ourselves to involve ourselves in training and teaching in training, in teaching and reading and doing craft, trade and household work with our children. Do you know, many children do not know how to cook or many young adults do not know how to cook. They do not know how to sew a button on their, on their um, shirt or on their jacket. They do not know how to do those basic things. They do not know how to hoover the floor, saying that I seen a young lady here in church trying to use the hoover once we had to take it off her. Why? Because she never look and see how it was done, right? They do not know how to cook. That's why they go to take away. That's why they always into just eat because they cannot prepare a meal. That's why KFC, McDonald's, there are long queues. That's why, because the parents never teach them, never bring them in the kitchen and show them how to do those things. I am not just talking about, people probably think I'm talking about female. No, I'm talking about man and also women. We men need to know how to cook. We know, uh, need to know how to put the pot on the fire and boil it and put, put things in it and cook it and make sure it tastes good. We need to do those things. In Exodus 13 verse 8, 
it says, and thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, this is, this is done because of what which the, that which the Lord did unto me when I come forth out of Egypt. We have got to teach them these things. In Exodus 13, verse 14, it's also said, And I shall show, and I shall be, sorry, and it shall be when thou son access thee in time, to come and say, what is this? When they ask a question, you need to have an answer. An answer to everything what they say. I could go on into Deuteronomy, but I'm going to just pick one verse out of Proverbs. Proverbs, I've got several verses, but if I dwindle in all of them, it's going to take too long. I shall just pick one verse <coughs> out of Proverbs. And this is one of the most famous verse, and it's Proverbs 31, verse, verse 1. The Lord said unto King Uel, you, um, the prophet that his mother taught him. The prophecy that his mother taught him. What his mother taught him brought him through life. This is we're talking about Samuel. This what his mother taught him was, has brought him through, through life. In the case of Israel, parents had a particular responsibility to teach their children the religious giving, giving them God's word. We see this in Deuteronomy 6, uh, 6 verse 6 to 9. We'll go to that later. Children, parents have a similar responsibility. Sorry, Christian parents have a similar responsibility. This says it in in, Ephes in um, Ephesians 6 verse 9 when, and also in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5 and 3 and 15 when, Tim when Timothy, young Timothy was educated by his grandmother and his mother Eunice and this is where we should be now as a Christian we have a big, big responsibility the moral standing of school, government, the country is not from God's word. It's not from God's word. But some of us stand by that. Some of us stand by that. Christian, we need to teach our children the word, not leave it to the school. We need to teach our children God's word and not to leave it to the school. We need to live our life in God's word and not in the world. Today's society, today's society, we must know that the school teach what the school teach our children. We must have a moral standard. I could remember when Tia was going across the road here to, um, what's the school called, um, Elston Hall, and they was having, in year five, they was going to introduce uh, sex education to, to a 10, 9, 10, 11 years old. And I could remember going over there um, my wife was doing something. I can remember going over there because I was really unhappy with it. So I went over and listened. And as I listened and listened and listened, I said nothing at first. Seeing what the others was going to come out with. And then all of them tend to agree that what the headmaster is saying is right. <coughs> and what is being taught is right. And that's one of the things we do. We agree with what is being said and what is being taught. And you know something? I, I had to say something. I had to say something. And um, one of the things I had to say is, who's teaching this, this um, sex education which is going to be taught in school? And this 
young lady stand up and said, I will be. I said, oh, are you married? She said, no. I said, what do you know about sex education? She said, she knows enough. I said, so you are indulged in immoral behavior and not because you're not married. She kept quiet. I said, what are you gonna teach my child about sex education? She kept quiet. I had to say to the headmaster, I'm not having my ta child taught sex education by anybody here because there's a moral standard with it. There's a moral standard. You cannot have an unmarried a married person teaching your child in those areas. Sorry. What they're going to read it from, from a book. What they're going to know about the love one another got from a book. I'm sorry, there is areas they can do things, but this is not one of the areas. Brothers and sisters, as I, as I um, continue, a lot of people stand up and agreed with me. This was not carried through um, Selston Hall Junior School while my daughter was there. I do not know what happened afterwards. I do not know what happened afterwards. It's up to the school and up to individual what happened. But I have got a moral standard for my, my child to teach my child in the way the Lord says I should teach him. That's my moral standard. Today's society does not do that. They do what the world, what the world want. But we as Christians must have a moral standard. This creates difficulty for Christian because we, are, we have a conflict between the value, value, value of God's word and the kind of education which is taught in the school. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20, it says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribes? Where is the deputies of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, no, not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, for the Jews require signs, and the Greek seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wise, wiser than man, and weaker than God is stronger than, them, than man. In Colossians 8, verse, verse uh, Col sorry, Colossians 2, verse 8, Beware, lest man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, that the traditional of man after the raiment of the world and not Christ. We see a lot of people running after what the world want and not doing what Christ want. That's what we see. Such, such conflict exists. Christian may consider That when the government accepts responsibility for the, for the child education of the citizen, it is for fulfilling part of it. Part of it, it is fulfilling. It is fulfilling 
that they do their reading, but still when they come home, you've got to teach them, teach them a bit more. It's fulfilling they do their maths, but when they come home, you still got to do, be, do you should still do a bit more. It's fulfilling their history and geography, but when they come home, they should still do a bit more. It is fulfilling their science and biology. If you know enough, you could still do a bit more. But there's also the part of moral, moral understanding in the world in which we have got to do it. We have got to help to provide the well-being of what is done. But, br brothers and sisters, what the, ch what, the, what the government does and what we do must go together. We must do the moral bit. Parents, Christian parents, Christian and church leaders, we have a responsibility concerning proper, proper instructions and development and the growth in those within our care. We have got that. That's why I'm so glad when I see the young ones coming out and doing this Bible, this, um, this lesson on a Thursday, what Beth did, and I hope more will come out and said, I want to do one and get something going. I'm so glad that Brother Jamie <clears throat> gives his time up on a Friday and do prayer time for men. I, and my wife does the same also, in which I should have mentioned it in, the, in the minutes, and do, does prayer time over, over the internet with the ladies and with the men. But you know something? Yes, I have not been on Brother Jamie's prior time, but it's such a shame that more men doesn't take this up. Men, have you thought about why you haven't? Have you thought about what you're showing your child? Have you thought about it? Because think about it, men. If you've got a son and they see you and they know there's a prior time going out and you are sitting there watching football, then what is your son saying? Football come first. When you're sitting there just watching TV, what is your son saying? Football come first or TV come first. You should make time to do these things. Make time for Christ. You make time for everything else. Parents, we need to read and know the word of God. That's something we need to do in order to live by it and to teach our children. Children do what they see their parents does. They do. <clears throat> so we have got to, I'm saying, we have got to do right when we come on to children and educating our children. Children and educating our children. One of the greatest responsibility, <coughs> sorry, one of the greatest responsibility for Christian parents is to train their children in the nature and administration of the Lord. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, sorry, Ephesians 6, 4. Ephesians 6 falls, read. Ephesians 6 4, read. And fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and administration of, administration of the Lord. We have got to teach them. We have got to teach them, not to make, not to provoke them. We should teach them. Teach them what the Lord has told us to do. The responsibility is for Christian parents. You know something, this is a great joy. It's a great joy. We have found this to be true. We ourselves, me and my wife, has found this to be true. It's a great joy to teach your children. <coughs> you see, we have joy. But we also have sadness. And it comes with all children. 
There is joy, then there is sadness. Joy, what is joy? Sadness, you might say, what is sadness? Some, I will say, will fall away for, for a time. They will fall away for a time. And when you want them to come, but they will fall away for a time. I am, I am a living proof of that. I fall away for a time, but you know something? I do come back because I do believe what the Bible said. Train your child to walk with God and they will return. I know they will. I could, I could show you many examples from brothers and sisters who has fallen away for a time, but they do come back. Some stay faithful. Some stay faithful, which is good. But some will have two heads. You might say, Pastor, what do you mean? Some will have one foot in the world and one foot in the church, but you will not know. Some of us will actually identify it. One foot in the world and one foot in church. That is some of the sadness we will face. That is some of the things we will face. But the Bible said train Training our children is all so right. All so right. Lord does not, sorry, the Lord does not just, it just, not, it just does not happen when we train them. It just does not happen in one hour of Sunday school a week when we train our child. It never equates to an hour when we do that for Sunday school. It's a truly 24-7 thing. We are to instruct all the time. Which is beautiful capture of what the Lord says in his command to us in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 to 9. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 to 9. Before I just go, before I just go there, <clears throat> this is a book I am trying to I tried, I'm doing my um, study on. I've been trying, I've been doing it for the last month. And um, what I'm doing, I'm not just reading through the book. I am looking at each verse, each verse, and trying to digest each verse, and trying to use each verse in its contents, and then put it in the contents of what it is today. That's what I'm doing with the book of Deuteronomy. I'm using Deuteronomy as my study. And you know something? I have not even got to chapter 3 as yet. And that's how I'm doing it. And I've been do, trying to do this for the last month. 6 verse 4 to 9. Hear ye, O Lord, hear ye, O Israel. The Lord our God is one, one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. And thou, they, thou, these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thus thou shalt teach them diligently unto the children and shall talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and, up, and shall be the fortress between the, thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of the house and on the gate. Why are you saying, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> this is something we have got to do 24 sevens. Not just on a Sunday for Sunday school. 24 seven, we should be doing these things. <clears throat> but in, but it, to begin with, let us, let us look at why and what, where the principle is 
I see in the Bible in relating to education our children. This is, a, this is where we should start. We should always start with prayer. Praying for our, our children, praying for the safety, praying for what we need them to do. Start with praying. Just not, don't, don't just start by going to a scripture verse. Go to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord. Let him talk to you also. Then we take number one. We must not neglect our children education. We must not neglect our children education. There are numerous verses in the Bible commanding us to train and discipline our children. Proverbs 22 verse 6 comes to mind. As I said before, train up a child in the way they should go and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Living proof myself, living proof of this, another brother in the church, living proof, I will say. It's up to us to teach our children. The moral standard is down to us parents, down to us parents, not the school what the school moral standards is, is what the world and the government tells them. We must have a moral standard to what God wants us to do. When my child was going to school, I do not mind them going, <coughs> going to school and learning maths, English and everything else. But when it comes to the word of God, it's down to me. They could learn some songs at school, but when it comes to the word of God, it's down to me. I can remember going to school <clears throat> as a young man, just down the road at Pendiford High School. I could even, at my junior school, which was St. Andrews in Whitmarines, I could remember assembly being assembly. I could remember they giving us something from scripture. I could remember they, we singing hymns from what we sing, sing, sing in church. But now, I do not even know what assembly is. Assembly is something they do and they say it's assembly. Right? We must educate our children. There's a moral component to education. As a proverb verse said above, there is a right path <coughs> to be on in one's life and also a wrong path and we are not to let our children stumble around stumble around and about blindly but we are to lead lead them in the godly way the godly way is the life and the road god puts us on no matter how old our children is <clears throat> We want the best for them. We want the best for our children, no matter how old they are. You know something, <laughs> when it comes to that, I even said to my big son who is 45, I do not agree with what you do, 40, sorry, 41. I'm, I'm adding age to him. If I'm adding age to him, I'm adding age to myself. I, I, I even said things to him now, and he'll sit down and he'll listen because he knows I am right. Years ago, when I was speaking to him about certain things, he'd walk out, then I won't see him for months, because I don't know whether they agree or it hurts him, but then he'll come back. He said to his sister once, I have not, I've missed so many years out of your life, but I don't know where it's gone. I said to his sister, I'll tell you where it's gone. I spoke to him about something and he didn't like it. And he had, didn't speak to me for a year, two years. But then when he comes back, he sees that I was right. And you want the best for your children, no matter how old they are. My mum still want the best for me, no matter how old I am. So <clears throat> you want your child to have a good job. That's what we all want. Good job so they can look after themselves. So they do not have to come to mommy's and daddy bank account and raid it. 
this is this is the time of the year where or the or the moment of pandemic where a lot of a lot of jobs a lot of people who um are not working i am probably one of the fortunate one who is in education who continue to work even from home and um still get a full wages and stuff like that my son my older son he is a driving instructor he's been in the last year he's probably worked a month in which he could say he's worked and there's time he say dad i don't want to but can you help me out and this is what we are here for to help them out when we know they needed they need some help yeah so we want them to have a good job we want them to have a good education yes but a lot of us emphasis on education is only what the world education is yes i want my son who's in london at this moment studying <coughs> to get to do his um to do his finance um investment banking account i want him to do do good and get what he's got to do but i also want him to be in god's word that's one of the things I also want him to do so he's got to see the way i live yes so why don't we also give our children a good christian education we want them to have all them things it's up to us to give them a good christian education why don't we also give them a good moral understanding in life that's what we should be doing sometimes we only give our children what the world want <clears throat> but we are not, and then we leave them to stumble around in the dark blind eating all the walls instead of leading them down that narrow path so they understand also don't forget my brothers and sisters <clears throat> the bible said there are two ro two roads the wide and the narrow if they are stumbling around stumbling around they will go down that um, wide path we have got to direct them down this narrow path that is our job number three is we are to teach them about god and his work teach them about god and his work that is our job teaching them about god and his work the heart and soul and strength of what god does <clears throat> we see this in deuteronomy 6 verse 9 and thou shalt and thou, thou shalt love the god with all thy heart thy heart and all thy might and thy words which i command thee shall be in thine heart and we will instruct sorry we will be in their in their heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto the children and shall talk to them when they sit us in their house and when they walk us on the street and when they lie us down these are things we should do we should teach we should write them in our house we have got bible verses written in our house and we have framed them <clears throat> we frame them and um before we write before we framed it we agree is this a good verse and we frame one of the verse i we have we have written is one peter is it one peter five sorry it's one peter five verse six and we have got this written in and we have framed it and i think it's in the room where we sit he said humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god and he might exhort you in due time casting all your tr all your cares upon him for he careth for you that is one of the verse in which we've written probably one of the first verse we've written and put on in a frame on the wall and it is so true but how can we teach our children when we don't study the word of god ourselves how can we do that how can we teach our children when we are not living the way we are walking that way 
Every moment is teaching. It's a teaching moment. Every moment is a lifestyle. We teach as we live, which means along with formal inst instructions, we must also teach a lot of informal instruction to our children through the way we live. Both parents have that responsibility. The informal living example applies as an instruction, we must do this. It's an example. A married couple, what, is, what your children see you do, they will also do. The way you behave to each other, they will also behave that way. The way you love each other, they will also love that way. I'm a very jokey sort of person. I'll say things at times and sometimes it's just saying my wife's name and she'll say, stop calling my name, you're just wearing it out, stop it. you got nothing to say to me, stop calling my name. And, but it's just something, it's just a love. And I'll say, Janet. Then she'll look at me, just smile and carry on. Because I am showing her something and showing my kids something also. We must not leave out anything when it comes to teaching our children. We must bring them up the way God teaches us and tells us to bring them up. It brings us to number four. Our, our God like history. He likes his, historical things. I'm thinking here about the Passover, which God is in, in institute as maybe as a remembrance, remembrance to the things he's done. He says this to, um, the, to the Israelite, should teach their children about his work. We look at um, Exodus 12, 26 and 20, 26, Exodus 12, 26, um, verse 26 and 27. And when he's talking about this, this is things we should do. He reminds me about things like the Ten Commandments, which tells us to obey, obey what God has done. Of course, these, we must also look, teach him about the death. This is so important, my brothers and sisters. We've got to teach him about the death, the resurrection of Christ. The burial, the death and resurrection of Christ. We have got to teach him that. We have got to teach him that. You might say, why? Without that, faith is, means nothing. We've got to teach him that. We've got to teach them to remember. We've got to remember to teach our children about, to, about things God did in biblical time. All of which is a justification for studying history and also point us to certain direction in our thinking. Brother, sister, these are things we've got to do. We've got to obey what God has done. Number five, he takes us to we, we are to, to we are told in about God's creation. We are told about God's creation. We are to teach our children that. In um, in Romans one verse twenty, he says, "For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen." being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power of the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So you teach them those things, they have got no excuse because you have teach them. So, so this, brothers and sisters, we have got to start to begin to study our Bible to understand these things and teach our 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 children. This brings us all down to number six. Many other Pacific study are not addressed in the scripture. We have got to teach them also to read, to do maths. We've got to teach them the knowledge of the all aspects of the Bible. Also to believe in the good stewardship of God's word. 
We've got to teach them the necessary knowledge of what the kingdom of God is all about. In Matthew 25 verse 14 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling in a far off land who called on his steward and delivered unto them his goods. Brothers and sisters, when the Lord called you to do his work, are you doing it? Let me just brush through this, um, this part of Matthew um, 25, verse 14. Do you know? Let me just run over it. <clears throat> he gave one five, five talents. He gave another two and he gave another one. He went on his journey. He went on his journey. The one with five talents went out and multiplied. He did his work. The one with two also did the same. The one with one dug a hole, put it in it covered it so no one could find it and I know there's a lot of us in who does those things when he returned the one with the five get took out the five and five more and the Lord blessed him the one with two did the same and the Lord blessed him but the one with one was so afraid he hid his talent in the earth lo Thou has, right, that's what he said. And he said in verse, in verse 28, let's go down to verse 28. Take thee therefore the talent from him, and he gave it to them, to him which had ten. So your talent in which the God, has given, as God has given you, what do you think he's going to do with it when it comes back? When you have done nothing with it, when you have just sat down on it, I believe... I believe that you should get up and use the talent which God has given you. Use it and use it for his glory. I believe also the Bible teaches that children are all people capable of having their own relationship with Christ. Capable, in Matthew 19 verse 14 it says, But Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not. To come unto me for such is a kingdom of heaven. The fact is young are often better to approach than elders. The young one is better uh, uh, to approach than elders because they do not put any barriers in the way. A lot of elder, older people, they try to use science. They try to use philosophy. They try to use this. Why they are not coming to Christ. Put all that out of your head. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. That's because that's what we should do. And there are some general observation about human nature. Which applies to us all. Not just to children. Brothers and sisters. God created us in his image. We see in Genesis 1.26. For many different in the image. We create each and every one of us to do something. And we are made beautiful, beautiful in God's sight. We are made beautiful, but something happened. Something happened and we became sinners. In verse in Romans 3, 23 said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He also made a way for us to come back. He also made a way for us. That's the God we serve. We need direction. We need to give our children that direction. And that's why, that's why I say to, brother, to, to you, brothers and sisters, we need to go out and do God's work. We need to go out because God has given us a job to do. He's given us a job to do and we need to do it. We need to do it. So brothers and sisters, education, educating your child, but also educating yourself in the administration of the Lord's work. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for, <coughs> for your word. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your purpose, my Lord. My Lord, be with each and every one of us. We know this weather is also cold, my Father. It's also cold. But we know your loving arms 
and your loving words will keep us warm. Father, be with us, be with us today, be with us tonight, and be with us as we continue to do your work and give your words, my Father. We ask all this in thy holy, precious name. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Amen.